Hey guys, how's it going? I'm going to highlight some uh, important points I found on the AMD uh, earnings car uh, on July 25th, 2017. Um, I listened to the entire conference call and I just want to show you some of the good points in the in the conference call so um, you don't have to actually watch the whole thing and you can just trust me that this is like probably the most important parts of the of the like whole conference call the questions and answers area so um, we'll begin go and then if I could sneak one last one in, Lisa, just on, on the GPU side, I think this is the second or third quarter in the row that you highlighted incremental gains inside of the data center. Can, can you help size what that rep represents as a percent of revenue today? And I guess more importantly, as you bring to market the 7 nanometer GPU part, how, how are you thinking about exploiting that in the data center and, and kind of the TAM expectations or revenue expectations we should have over the, over the next kind of four to eight quarters? Yeah, so on the you know, GPU side, uh, there's no question that the demand for GPUs in the data center are growing very quickly, um, even uh, faster than um, on the CPU side, uh, for sure. And our data center engagements, um, you know, our, our focus on the GPU side is very uh, cloud-centric. So, you know, large customers, uh, you know, places where our GPU uh, capability um, can, uh, you know, can be uh, well targeted. Um, I would say the, the size of the business is still small. So, you know, we are growing, but um, it is still small. But there's lots of interest in our current generation MI25. And there's um, even uh, more interest in our 7 nanometer, um, you know, Vega GPU that's coming to market later this year. So we expect um, an opportunity to grow that segment, um, you know, over the next uh, four to eight quarters. And as you can see in the market, you know, overall the GPU uh, segment is growing uh, quite a bit in data centers, and so you know, we'll continue to invest uh, heavily in, in this area. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. One of them, that, that they were talking about how GPUs are going to be in service. Before, it, uh, it was just basically CPU, but uh, since NVIDIA is getting into the server market using strictly GPUs. GPUs are actually becoming very important right now. It, in Right now in our society, we need GPUs. Like they're way more important than CPUs. That's why Intel is uh, trying to bake their own GPU because they know that it's gonna be a big market down, uh, down the road in the future when everything needs more GPU. At least this is what I believe. This is what from my research um, we'll continue on to the next one. Continue to watch the market, you know, develop um, over the next couple of quarters. All right. And then, um, Lisa, have you seen any competitive response from Intel um, so far in either PCs or servers? You know, for example, um, you know, some of your desktop uh, parts uh, saw some uh, ASP uh, decline. Was it just mix or uh, price competition or anything else that uh, we should keep in mind? Yeah, sure, Vivek. So let me take um, each of the segments separately. So if you look at the PC segment, um, you know, what we have uh, seen is basically a ramping of our product portfolio. Uh, certainly in a desktop, um, we had um, some mix here in the second quarter where we um, increase the percentage of the um, APUs that were being sold into the desktop channel segment. And so you saw a little bit of a mix to, um, you know, a bit softer uh, desktop ASPs. Um, but overall, you know, when I look um, overall, um, I would say that the competitive um, situation is about what I would expect. You know, there's product competition and, you know, we see that. Um, you know, we, we do ensure that there is, you know, good transition of products. So when we moved from our first generation Ryzen to our second generation Ryzen, um, you know, we had some channel programs to make sure that, uh, you know, we manage channel inventory on the first generation. Uh, but we've seen nothing that I would call, you know, unusual. And on the notebook side, actually, I'm, I'm pretty pleased because, you know, we're really seeing the notebook side of the business pick up. And so mobile ASPs were up. Uh, the percentage of Ryzen units um, in mobile were up. And, you know, we see that continuing um, into the second half of the year. Um, and then on the Epic side, um, again, I would say that, you know, the competition is, is, is really product-based and, 
you know, for us, uh, you know, there's some workload optimization that we do with customers, uh, but I haven't seen anything that's unusual relative to the pricing environment. And in fact, you know, as um, as Epic ramps, you know, our ASPs are going up. Got it. And one last quick one, um, if I may. When should we expect to see the breakout quarter for Epic, um, Lisa? Will that be Q3, uh, Q4? Uh, what's the visibility um, around that? You know, I, I think we are uh, very focused on, you know, ensuring we deliver that uh, mid-single digit, um, you know, unit share um, at the end of 2018. I think as we go into uh, the second half of the year, I, I would still see it as, uh, you know, fourth quarter would be a, a real uh, important quarter for us. I think we'll see ramps into third quarter. And, you know, the key is, as you know, with some of these cloud partners, um, you know, they're, uh, it's, it's actually important, you know, when they um, actually ramp these uh, these larger instances. And so, you know, lots of lots of visibility into work being done, and the exact timing will depend on our, our customers' uh, ramps. Okay. Thanks very much. One thing on the PC side, particularly notebooks, one of the questions I'm getting most often from investors is as, as the product portfolio from AMD improves um, dramatically, and I think will again as you guys go to 7 nanometer, it, it seems like winning um, sell-in share with, with OEMs um, is something that's, uh, that you guys have a bit of control of. Um, but, but I wanted to ask a little bit about sell-through and, and consumer adoption and, and sort of mind share around your client products. Um, Intel's uh, wound down a little bit some of the Intel inside marketing program, and I know you maybe have some opportunities there. Maybe you could talk about some of the steps that your their marketing team is making to sort of maybe change and, and refresh some of the consumer perception of the products um, relative to how quickly they've improved fundamentally. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. So, um, Matt, on your uh, f first question relative to the manufacturing of the second generation of Epic, so um, as I said earlier, you know, we uh, are working with both TSMC and Global Foundries in 7 nanometer. Um, as for the 7 nanometer ROM that we're currently sampling, that's being manufactured at TSMC. Um, and then your second question about uh, where we are in the PSPC market, you know, sell-in versus sell-out share. Um, actually, it's a great question. Um, it's a great question. And, um, you know, when I look at the PC market, we have great relationships with the OEMs. I mean, you can see it from the number of platforms that we have out there. Uh, but there's no question that um, there's opportunity for us to get the consumer perception and the uh, commercial um, enterprise perception, um, you know, up. And, uh, and so we've been very focused on that, and um, you know that comes with um, additional investment in go-to-market expenses. So, uh, you know, getting the Ryzen brand out there, getting the Radeon brand out there, um, it includes um, additional training at some key retailers to ensure that they know how to sell Ryzen and they know what the value proposition is. And um, what we see is, you know, some clear signs of early momentum um, in sellout. So, you know, as um, our platforms launched here in the month of June, we actually saw on um, quite a few of the outlets that um, they actually sold out of our product, and we've had to uh, restock that um, uh, here uh, quickly. And as we go into the second half of the year, I think you'll see in both back to school and in holiday globally um, that we have a larger presence of assortment than uh, we have had in the past. So that's a clear focus for us um, in the PC market. Um, so they're, they're selling the new products pretty well. She said that some of the OE, uh, some of the retailers sold out of their product on in the first like day or so, first few days. So uh, there is demand for AMD product, and remember how I showed you the Amazon. Clearly, there's a there's a demand for the product. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Kevin Cassidy with Stiefel. Please proceed with your question. 
question. Uh, just again on EPIC, um, you were very clear that it was going to be about four quarters uh, in qualification before your customers would start deployment. With EPIC 2, do you, uh, are there any programs in place or can we expect that it to be a shorter amount of time before that could be deployed? Uh, yes, Kevin. So um, I believe, and you know, of course we'll have to see how this plays out, but I think with EPIC, um, there were some customers who waited um, for us to completely qualify uh, before they started, um, you know, let's call it their own um, evals, and, and that's to be understood because, you know, we were sort of returning to the market. Um, I think with uh, the second generation of Epic, one would expect um, that, um, you know, there would be some customers who would do, let's call it, parallel qualifications with our own qualifications. And so I think there is an opportunity to, um, you know, um, sort of overlap um, some of that work, and, and certainly that's part of the reason that we've started uh, early sampling um, as early as we have to uh, try to parallel, parallelize some of that activity. Okay, great. And, and on the uh, GPU um, traction you're getting in the data center, is there a high attach rate with your EPIC processors, or, or is that just an independent uh, traction? Um, I would say at the moment, um, you know, sort of for 2018, you know, type revenue, um, they are independent engagements um, at the moment. Um, I think as we move into the 7 nanometer node uh, with both um, Epic and our uh, Vega 7 nanometer, uh, there will be more of an attach rate, and, and there, there is more interest, frankly, in that, um, that attach. Uh, that is uh, that is positive from a margin standpoint. Great. Thank you very much. Our final co question comes from the line of Tim Arcuri with UBS. Please proceed with your question. Thank you. I had um, two. Um, I, I, I guess when I look at the stock, there's not. I'm not sure that there's a lot of doubt about the share gain targets this year, but maybe there is some question about the you know ability to sustain those targets next year and the year after. So I guess the question, first question is, um, what 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 are you doing differently this time that um, was not done in the uh, Opteron cycle? Are you giving your customers more visibility to your roadmap? Thank you. Uh, Tim, I think the the major thing that we're doing differently, um, you know, as a company and certainly around Epic is um, we're doing what we said we were going to do. Um, you know, we laid out a five-year roadmap for what we wanted to do in servers. You know, we told them what first-generation Epic would look like. Um, it came out um, a little bit better than they expected. Uh, we told them when to expect second-generation Epic and what we were trying to do with that. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really pleased to say that we're exactly on track to what we said we were going to do. And uh, we have a third-generation, um, you know, behind that. So, you know, you know, our focus is to execute really, really well and provide, you know, customers the differentiation and the value proposition to uh, consider us as a long-term partner. You know, we are not after what happens over the next two quarters. I mean, this is extraordinarily, you know, it's a journey for us with Epic, and, um, you know, I think we feel good about what we've done, and the entire team is focused on delivering what we said we were going to do. Got it, Lisa. Thank you for that. Um, and then I guess just the, la the last question is really around the strategic um, foundry roadmap beyond 7 nanometer. Clearly, you have a lead now that, um, you know, because Intel is going to really, I think, functionally skip over 10 nanometer, which is great, and maybe it was, it's a little bit unexpected given, you know, when you, you know, began development of these parts. But how do you think strategically beyond 7 nanometer as you move to, uh, you know, 5 nanometer with your partner and where Intel will be at that time? Thank you. You know, what we see in the um, Foundry roadmap is, uh, is actually a, a very, you know, nice cadence of, um, of technologies. So um, we do believe 7 nanometer will be a large node. Um, there will be derivatives of 7 nanometer, you know, 7 nanometer, 7 nanometer plus. Um, you know, we have seen uh, the first view of 5 nanometer, and we think 5 nanometer is very competitive as well. So, you know, again, our goal is to use the best that process technology can offer in the foundry market and then differentiate on architecture and, um, you know, sort of, you know, sort of product positioning and, and those kinds of things. Thank Ladies you very much. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it.
uh, so some of you guys may look sound confused, but uh, from what I got from the whole conference call, that the AMD is a long term thing, and right now, at right now, they're gonna be profitable for like at least until the end of 2019. So they're gonna be profitable for seven quarters. Uh, all the way until 2019. I don't know what's gonna happen beyond 2019. I don't know what's gonna happen in 2020, 21, 22. But I know that AMD is gonna do good until 2019. At least that's where the company's projected, and that's where I see the projection of the company because I used to be a big AMD fanboy. Like you know how I'm with Aurora. Every I I researched everything about AMD. So. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, most of my audience is probably confused. If I mean, if you if you have any questions to ask me, just please comment below. Uh, uh, I guess disclaimer: if you buy AMD, you're risking your money. Blah blah blah, because it's a stock market. So <laughs> uh, maybe that's not professional. But uh, thanks for watching. See you guys later, and subscribe for future updates. Bye.